My name is Lily Regalia, and I am a mixed media artist based out of Wisconsin. I am recording this on July 8th, 2024, and I will be answering Stan's questions to the best of my ability. Question one, what's your background and upbringing? How does this impact how you see the world? So I received my BFA degree in painting from the University of Wisconsin-Whitewater. My work focuses on the home, and for the longest time, I thought Wisconsin was that for me. Hence why I got my degree there and never truly left until recently. Uh, A few weeks ago, I came back from a three-month art study in Naples, Italy. Italy has always been the number one country I've wanted to travel to ever since I was little, and it was obviously very different from where I grew up. Very loud, lots of scooters, traffic, commotion, whereas it's extremely quiet and open living in the rural Midwest comparatively, and it's really allowed me to focus in on and explore the interior, which I've noticed is anything but. Uh, I think I'm always drawn to chaos in a way, wherever I am, which is why I felt comfortable in Italy. Anyways, there's this interesting dynamic of loud subject matter within quiet moments that I choose to focus on. I enjoy exploring the animalistic nature of humans and how we live in and use domestic spaces. And I think I've always been fascinated with this subject matter because throughout my childhood, that is what I've been used to seeing. I was exposed to chaos. My parents and grandparents built and rehabbed houses throughout my childhood, and my mom was a contractor for a little while. I also come from a broken home, and all this means that I always saw homes ripped apart physically and put back together. I saw all the bare bones underneath the pretty facades, like the furniture and the hardwood floors. I saw the motion and movement of the people around me as they worked. I saw messiness and lines constantly moving, and I only ever was able to translate all of this into paint once I was educated at university. I started leaning into line while I was there. I started layering, started questioning the conceptual nature of materials, as well as relating this to emotional turmoil and things I was going through at the time. In short, I explore connection. Metaphorically, how do we as humans build physical connections and how do they help to inform our emotional ones? Who are your biggest influences? My biggest influence has always been my mom. She is the hardest worker I know. Uh, Her drive and passion consistently informs mine. And two of my instructors, Greg Picaro and Rebecca Harp, have had a huge influence on me in different ways. Uh, Greg was there for me throughout the completion of my degree, not only introducing me to different techniques with acrylics, but encouraging me with my subject matter to experiment. So I experimented with fragmentation and stringing together moments in time. Uh, Rebecca has taught me the importance of plein air, which I'll try to keep up with, of simplifying form into light and shadow, and of truly seeing. As far as other artists go, I am I am encapsulated with Egan Sheila's use of line in his work, as well as the subject matter that he chooses to explore, provocative and uncomfortable, uh, Picasso for similar reasons, and also for his ability to break down form. I aim to blend both, to blend realism and, and abstraction harmoniously, so I try to follow those masters for guidance. What are you focusing on right now? Right now, I'm focusing on what my time in Italy truly meant to me. That experience really changed me, so now I'm just trying to figure out what environment now fulfills my needs. Being in that in-between stage, making decisions that will change the course of my entire life is taking up a lot of my energy, but I'm investing energy into my painting practice as well. Uh, While in Italy, I took up using soft pastels, which I only used briefly before. Uh, I love their rawness now and the texture they leave behind, and I also love their layering qualities. So currently, I'm just trying to figure out how to incorporate them into my mixed media practice. Uh, Besides the layering of mediums, I was really inspired by the layers of Naples itself. Uh, The graffiti on top of the historic architecture on top of the volcanic ash 
it just really fits in well with the nature of my body of work. So I'm discovering how to best utilize this newfound inspiration. What is the biggest challenge of being an artist? Uh, balance, at least for me. Uh, as artists trying to harness the creativity influx, our brains don't work like a nine to five, uh, especially for those of us who need that nine to five as our main source of income and then have to come back to the studio and be in the zone creatively. It's tough. I've only recently too started working a retail job, um, coming home to paint at night, searching for other open job positions, working on marketing myself as an artist, among many other things. And I haven't been juggling all of that for too long yet since I'm still young, but I have so much respect for artists that have been in the game for much longer and are still going strong. What advice would you give to your younger self? I think I would say what other people constantly tell me now, which is whatever you do, keep making work. Even when it's frustrating and a struggle the whole time, never after a session of drawing do I feel that it was wasted time. And I think I was harder on myself when I was younger, which I'm still hard on myself now, but I thought that every time I touched paper that it had to be the best thing I'd ever produced. So basically it kept me from pursuing and completing work. I also went through a really emotionally difficult period, uh, a toxic relationship in college where it was hard for me to get up and make work afterwards, and I still regret what I didn't produce, but now I know how much happier I am when I can project instead of letting feelings fester. Even if I'm not ready to take on a big canvas painting, uh, if I don't have to hype myself up for a large undertaking, um, I just tell myself I'll do studies and the anxiety subsides. Have you ever tried any unconventional mediums or techniques? As a mixed media artist, I find a lot of joy in the unconventional. I've used materials like chewed bubblegum, tape, and caulk in my work, and just the history and context of these materials I found can push my work further conceptually. For example, I used bubblegum to describe the feeling of being used by another person, chewed up and spit out, so to speak, which is what I titled the piece. I used caulk to push the concept of human relationships and connections because caulk is used to form bonds and fill gaps. I also like to use common mediums unconventionally as well. For example, I like to really water acrylic down and do washes, using it more like watercolor. And I can't wait to see how I combine pastel with other mediums, um, but I'm still working on it. Do you listen to music or have any other type of background noise while you work? I always have music on while I'm working, and I like to change it up. Um, my favorite genres are indie folk and alternative, so I listen to a lot of Bon Iver, Mickey Rogers, Iron and Wine, and Hosier. I also really dig 80s bands, so Tears for Fears, Depeche Mode, and The Smiths. Uh, recently, I've been starting to listen to a bit of Death Cab for Cutie and John Mayer. Uh, his album Room for Squares really speaks to me. The fact that he released it when he was my age and going through similar things in his life, I just really connect to his lyricism overall. What is the best reaction that someone has had to your artwork? Uh, I remember it was my senior show at university. I had several works displayed and this girl came up to me to discuss my piece Homemaker Cycle. It's a collaborative piece with my mom where I adhered her old house plans to canvas and layered acrylic and charcoal over them, and it describes how the work inside of a home is never truly over. Anyways, I guess I accidentally got one of my dog's hairs in my paint, and I never noticed it. Well, this girl did, and she came up to me after the show, and she did not have the reaction I expected. Uh, she actually started crying because it touched her so deeply. Um, we had a conversation about how the beautiful imperfections are what make a home. It just unintentionally fit with my concept, and now I hope that the hair never fell out, and I still have it rolled up in the corner of my room if I ever want to reference it at any point. What do you hope that people take away from your work? Uh... I hope that people connect with my work in a way that maybe feels slightly uncomfortable because it means that I did my job. 
Uh, a lot of my larger works discuss the truths that we don't want to wrestle with or face within relationships and within ourselves. Uh, feelings of loneliness, of disconnection, of craving touch, of sexual abuse, and of uh, finally growth and rebuilding. Uh, my work is never created with beauty in mind. It's always the truth first and the aesthetical part is secondary um, at all if it comes from the truth. Uh, hopefully... Uh, my audience finds a way to connect through my vulnerability. And I think that will be all for this interview. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to listen if you've made it this far. And thank you, Stan, for giving me this opportunity to talk and a platform in which to share my work. If you want to follow me on social media, my Instagram is my name underscore art. That is L-I-L-Y-R-E-G-A-L-I-A underscore art all lowercase. Um, my Threads account is the same, and my Cara account is just Lily Regalia, all lowercase. Uh, my website is lilyregalia.com. Uh, right now, I have my two painting series, Connection and Disconnection, on there, along with some charcoal sketches and pastel drawings. Uh, I'm hoping to get my Italy drawings turned into prints sometime in the near future, um, so that you can also order that off my website, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, I think that is it for now. Okay, thank you again. Bye.